as promised, Wellington Mayor Tori Fano. Come in, join us in the studio. Good morning, Tori. Good morning. How are you? I'm good. Right. It's now officially halfway through your term as Wellington Mayor. You ran on a platform of rejuvenating the central city and fixing our water woes, amongst other things. How would you rate your first half of your term? I mean, I think we can say that the first half of my term has been challenging. Um, I've had to quickly learn how to become a mayor and learn how to work with uh, different groups. And of course, there were some dramas last year as well. Um, But how I feel at this halfway point is really positive. So uh, in terms of what we've achieved, so we have the LTP, our big budget, um, set to be signed off this Thursday. Yep, we'll talk about that shortly. I want to stick to... To what you know, you for you yourself. Okay, uh, okay. Do you I'll, think le- I'll leave do, that for now. Do you think you've lived up to your promise? Yes, I do. Do you? I think the first. I think um, last year, not so much. It was a really spotty year. But I, where I've come to now, I feel really happy. This is this is how I want to work with people. Um, I, I'm, I've become quite clear on what I want to focus on for the rest of the term and hopefully next term. Um, but I will admit that last year was incredibly challenging. Why? Not ideal. Why was it incredibly challenging? I think, um, y- you know, I, I trying to adapt to being a public figure, I, I think I just was a bit too naive. And Did you become a rock star? I don't know. Yeah, a little bit. You know, I, I kind of, um, that whole party girl thing and... Rock star. Rock star-ish and rock star lifestyle was... Um, a result of this new experience for me, um, but it wasn't the real me. Um, and so I've spent the last six to seven months just really focused on the job, focused on um, myself, and I'm really happy where I've, with where I've landed. What do you think you're most proud of? I think in terms of what I'm most proud of, I, I think, look, and, and I have to credit people, this is never just my work, but I'm really proud of the district plan and pushing that through with actually very little controversy and within um, a few hours. And I, I, I actually... Well, you've rather... still got to sign off on Thursday, don't you? No. Oh, sorry, I'm talking about long-term plan. Long-term not... plan. Yeah, yeah, district plan. Oh, different. my goodness, I thought yeah. you'd surprise me with no, something no, I didn't no. know. You, no, I surprised um, myself with my no. own stupidity. So yeah. that has majority has been signed off by the minister, um, oh, yes. most yeah. of our recommendations. Yeah. And I, I, so I'm really proud of that, but credit must go to previous councils and councillors uh, for putting the work into that. Um, a, a, as controversial as it is, I, I feel proud to have worked with central government to retain, while, while we got rid of the Let's Get Wellington Moving programme, we still re- ma- retained a part that I am um, passionate about. Okay. Once again, we'll go on to that as we go on yes. during the hour. Yep. What's the most, the biggest thing that you actually regret when you sit down and you, you know, you look in the mirror and you doing your makeup on the morning, you say, I wish I didn't do that. I don't love how reading panned out. There were, I was passionate about the outcome, which was a new entertainment precinct on Courtney Place, but in hindsight, it was not the perfect um, process, uh, so to speak. But Do you think you should be so criticised when you were really trying so hard to fix something? I mean, I don't think so. I think some of it was a bit um, unfair, but look, this is the job, and you, you, you take it on the chin. Um, we tried something, it didn't work, we'll move on. How but, much do you think you, as personally, Tori Fano, has changed in the last 18 months? As a person? Yeah. I, I feel like a different person, to be honest. Um, do you get up in the morning and or go to bed at night saying, God, I can't wait to get to work tomorrow? Yeah. Do you? And I suppose that's why I feel like a different person, because I've um, I have structure. I go to the gym most days. I do my reading the night before to feel prepared for the next day. I have the conversations I need to, so I don't feel anxious about it. Um, it's more manageable now because I'm less focused on the rock star lifestyle. Um, that it feels it's really really hard. I'm, I, I won't I won't yep. lie. Really challenging job. But it feels good. It feels like this is what the mayoralty is meant to feel like. And can you 100% say that you're still going to run next term? I 100% am. I'm already um, building my campaign team. Okay. 
This week, the council will vote on its long-term plan. There's two things that are, the plan has, you know, sparked a lot of controversy. Yes. The first is the the council stake in the Wellington Airport and the closure of Kandala Pool, which is such a small and minuscule thing, the Kandala Pool, but it seems to be resonating all the time. Maybe it's just people with power and money can, <laughs> can say what they want to say, but we'll go to that in a minute. Yeah. A public poll commissioned by the unions Wellington found that 74% of Wellingtons are po- Wellingtonians oppose the selling of the council stake in the airport. Why is the public so opposed to it and yet you're so convinced it's the right thing to do? Um, I'm, you know, you have to take certain polls with a grain of salt. So we've done consultation, right, which has had several thousand people participate in it. And when you combine um, those who prefer to sell full shares and those who prefer to sell partial shares, those added up add to about 60% in favour. Of selling? Of selling. You see, I have never, ever spoken, and don't say it's my age because I deal with a lot more young people than I do old people. I have never spoken to someone that's actually said, yeah, they, that's a really good idea. Put that money overseas and don't worry about it and get rid of the airport. We don't have a share in the airport anymore. Well, no one wants to sell off a public asset, but when you're dealing with the problem, which is our lack of insurance, which puts us at high risk. But you you keep combining this insurance to Wellington Airport. Wellington Airport would have their own insurance. So you don't have to worry about the insurance of Wellington Airport. But so, but what we so what we I mean yes. So that that deals with the airport. So um, let's say we have um, a big disaster um, across the city. Um, we currently hold um, a bunch of assets that cannot be insured. So it's not even just about the airport. It's about all of our other. Um, but you're assets. not going to use the money from the sale of the airport, so you can. Let me let me finish. Okay, sorry. I just want to explain this. Okay. Sorry. Um, so currently we hold about $2.6 billion of risk in the event of a, of a um, uh, disaster. So we've received, we commissioned a report with KPMG who recommended to diversify our assets more to remove some of that risk. And part of that was moving some of our assets with the airport share, which is one of our biggest ones, and put it into a perpetual fund. So if we go into disaster mode and we want to rebuild our city, we have access to that fund immediately. We would not have access to the airport fund immediately. In fact, it would take... Why wouldn't you sell your social housing? Why wouldn't you do that? It's a headache, it costs you money, it's a pain in the backside and the government's doing it properly. Why wouldn't you go to the government and say, give us the same amount of money, you probably get more money by selling your, your social housing? Because the, the government is not currently in the space of giving us that much money. There, there's, no, there's been no indication that they would want to buy our stock off us. What about um, a foreign buyer? See, but that's the that's what we're trying to avoid is is foreign ownership in a lot of these things. Okay. Um, and so one option is to sell off all of our shares, or one option is to sell partial shares with the airport, which means we would retain ownership as well as a board position, which is probably where we're going to lean toward. Okay. And that's not been talked about, has it? Not that's really. A, that's no. the first time I've ever heard it. It's it's in the consultation document, and it's something that we've put up, but that's not what the narrative has covered. No. So you, even though you're now a greenie again, yep. you think that selling the airport shares is a good idea. Now, I wouldn't have thought the Greens would like that idea. They don't. They don't. But I think it goes to show you that I'm- You're no very, longer full green. I'm independent. I'm, I'm a green member, but I'm still independent. And from a financial perspective, and the, the, for the need of us having to diversify our portfolio to meet our insurance risk, I don't want to share a significant asset it is one of our only assets, and we we have limited options. Should Tim Brown, because of his position previous, mm. be able to vote on what happens with council shares on the airport? Oh, well, I've got my team checking that at the moment whether that's a conflict of interest. So at that, at well, the it's beginning, definitely a conflict I mean, of interest. Well, call possibly, it what you want, and yeah. that that would be a legal. Um, we'd need to get legal advice on that. But before every meeting, before every vote, we ask councillors to declare. But he's been very vocal on it. He oh, wants he it sold. He yes, wants he to see, you know, does yeah. he want to look after his mates back at, back at uh, Infotrol, do you You'd think? have to ask him that. Oh. So, you know, he, he, he's certainly been very vocal. That's his opinion, whatever. For me, I want to remove that level of risk that we have in the event of a disaster for our city and being okay. able to rebuild our city. You see, I can't quite work that one out because I keep thinking that surely that's imported and uh, insured and surely they've got loss of interest if something happens to the If to something the happens to the airport but yeah. not the city. Okay, all right. Uh, I still don't get that and I think that we'll be talking about that and I want to be public on this 
uh, I think we'll be talking about it in 20 or 30 years, the same as we're talking about Trust Bank, a bank that we owned as a city, and we got rid of that almost the same way. Um, there was a story 10 days ago about your attendance at the airport board meetings. You mm. missed half the meetings last year. Do you take that position on the board seriously, or is this another sort of kind of uh, admission that you're in the departure lounge, we're in the departure lounge, sorry for the pun, we're getting out of the, we're getting out of being a no 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 not at all. So I take it really seriously, but it's important to note. So the 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 cl- I have many clashes. So if I could detail them, one meeting I had audit and risk committee. I have to go to that. I have to vote on things. Second, I had the Thomas George McCarthy Trust, of which I'm a member, and only occur- occurs once a year, and that's with um, Governor General. Um, third. I had the local government New Zealand Council Strategy Day. I'm on National Council. Uh, and fourth, I was sick. Okay. So they, were, they are very legitimate clashes. I think what it highlights, everything is important, but the demands of my time are quite significant, and sometimes I just have to choose. Let's move on to the Kandala pool. Why has this been such a big, big decision for something relatively... I mean, I don't live in Kandala and I don't mm. swim at the pool... Um, but relatively speaking, it's a, it's a reasonably small, sig- insignificant investment. Yeah, it's. Um, I mean, you've got you've got the pool, which the the community is deeply passionate about, um, and, and they love it. And then you've got this proposal um, currently. One is to demolish it, which would cost about four million, and one is to upgrade it, which would cost eleven point seven. What we're trying to work through at the moment with the community is is there some sort of middle ground? Um, and Why don't you, would you give it to me for nothing on the basis that there's a swimming pool there open for half a year for the next 25 years? So we've looked into options like that. Um, and because there's like, like reserve land, it's really difficult to pass it on. However, um, as I've committed to, with the Save the Pool, Candela Pool Group, and spoken with Councillor Calvert about, um, we're looking at our options of that middle ground. I'm very open to it. What's your gut telling you? Will, there be, will you be going out there for your swimming workout next year and swimming in the Kandala pool? Look, it's not to my taste, that swimming pool. Um, um, it's, it's a bit cold, but, but I, this is about what the community wants. Do you think it'll be open? I'll go. I'll put it less cliche. Will, uh, it, will it be open next time? It's possible. Summer? It's possible. Take a short break with Tori Farno, Wellington Mayor. When we come back, we'll be talking about the district plan, which I confuse with the long-term plan. Shows you uh, on top of my game this morning, 19 minutes past 11. Wellington Mayor Tori Fano in the studio with us this morning. Housing Minister Chris Bishop has signed off on most of the council's district plan meeting. We're soon to get uh, more housing density in the Wellington City. How pleased were you with his decision? Really pleased. Um, I think, so we had about 20 recommendations. He's accepted half of them that will enable growth, and that's really, really wonderful for Wellington City. The ones that got a bit tricky were us wanting to delist a number of heritage buildings. He had to operate within the law and he couldn't accept those recommendations. You, I mean, you had a one-on-one with him, you met with him. Do you think that once he can he can operate within those laws that those heritage buildings will be gone? Yes, I do. So you think it's just a ticking the, the right box it's and, just and it'll the be right gone? It's the right box, absolutely. Okay. Uh, have you had any, had any updates on what's going on with the Reading Complex? No. So nothing, it's just going to stay nothing. there dead? It will probably just stay will, there. Will that be a kind of a win for you? Will you will you sit there and let it rot and come next election and say, hey, I told you. <laughs> kind of, like. Yeah, that worries me. We, Could it worry me? Um, yeah, it should, because we've exhausted our options in terms of what council can do, um, and now we're out, and it's now up to reading to form some sort of deal with someone else. But who knows when that's going to be. Is there any talk of anything? Not that I've heard. I think because it truly is out of our hands. The only thing we can really do is increase um, the rates for derelict buildings, which is by we're going to increase it times five. Um, And, you know, we usually use that sort of tool to encourage developers to do something instead of land banking. We'll see if that has any effect, but... Uh, look, I don't know. Will you um, get any advice from your now uh, bunch of 10 superstar mates? Yep. Have they given you any advice on Reading? I mean, you've got E.O. Aroni and you've got Mark McGuinness. I mean, combine those two, whew, there's some power there. Yes, there is. 
Um, so the next, so we've had our first meeting to primarily talk about the terms of reference, how often do we meet as a group, and a general discussion about Wellington City. And I, I left that meeting feeling really great about how passionate they are about the city, how much they want to offer solutions. Um, the, the meeting that we have in a month is all about city revitalisation and how we do deal with things like reading, um, and I'm, I'm looking forward to it. So do you think you'll get some advice from these people and listen to it? Yes. So if Mark McGuinness says to you, Mayor, I think we need to do this, or EO, and I'm not centering on the two, but I mean, they're the two two big money people there. Let's be really honest yeah. about it. If they say, let's do this, let's do that, you'll say, okay, I'll take it to the council yeah. because your advice is to do it. That's the, that's the purpose of the group. Wow, that's great. What about the derelict buildings? How quickly do you reckon we're going to find out about that? From Chris Bishop, we have, what, oh, what's so, the timing on that? How long do we have to wait? We, I don't know. So me and uh, Councillor McNulty had sent a letter to him looking at legislation around um, heritage buildings. And so he's currently waiting on advice from his officials, the minister is, and once he has it, he's going to meet with us again. Okay. But I don't know when that will be. Before we go to the news, I want to ask you quickly about Wellington Water. Is yes. this a complete head case? I mean, what, I mean, what the hell's going on? Wellington Water has come back. Cap in hand to the Regents Council is asking for more than $51 million because they didn't fill out a form the right way or they didn't do their cash flow. Now, I spent all weekend doing some cash flows um, myself. You don't make a mistake when you do cash flows, yep. do you? Well, no. So this was a huge mistake. Um, and Wellington Water and their board met with the mayors on Friday uh, and, and, you know, massive apology from them. Uh, and they accepted responsibility for it. And as, uh, as a committee... But how does that help me and you? Well, it, Apology ain't going to help us with no, $51 no, no. million. So dollars. what we uh, instructed them to do is an independent report to find out what, how this um, mistake happened, how we can hold someone accountable, but also we need to establish some KPIs immediately um, to ensure that we are spending the money that we've put in in our long-term plan, $1.8 billion, that it's actually going to what we need it to go to, which is pipes. Is there a risk here that Wellington Water will lose the trust of Wellington? So I think it's already lost the trust. Uh, yeah, so the next steps that they do will be really, really important, but um, they've said to us they're committed to working with the region to address this immediately. Um, we've got our uh, statement of intent coming up, um, but and alongside all of this work, this is why we know Wellington Water, the, the model isn't fit for purpose, uh, and why we need to work towards a more sustainable model uh, with the government, which will hopefully be, hopefully be done in dust. So you're on board with that now? Yeah. I always was. No, you were yes, not. Was. No, you were not. You were not on board with water done better. You were against it. Remember, you were before the election. You were. Oh well. Well, no. I preferred three waters reform. Yeah, yeah. That was yeah. my preference. Yeah. Um, but look, look, that didn't happen. Yeah. Yesterday's I, yesterday. Now, now I'm on, I'm on board. I've signed the MOU. Okay. We're all good. All right. Wellington mornings with Mayor well, Wellington Mayor Tory Farno. Now it's your chance to have a few questions. Do you want to put your headphones on, please, Tory? Well done. Deborah, good morning. You have a question for Mayor Tori Farno. Hello, Deborah. Are you there, Deborah? Hello, Hello? Deborah. Are you there? Have you got a question? Yes, I'm here. For, have you got I'm a here. question? Okay. Have you got a question for Mayor Tori Farno? Yes. Hello, Tori. I was just wondering how much money you think you'd, you'd get if you sold the Wellington Airport. Uh, it depends on the market at the time. Um, but it'll be in the few hundred million. Thanks for that, Deborah. Let's go to Bryce. Good morning. You have a question for Mayor Tori Farnett. Yeah, good morning. Hey, I was just wondering why the 1,288 submissions for the Karori Cycleway were never counted. Thanks, Bryce. Um, I'll, uh, I'll check in on, um, with our consultation team about that and how that's incorporated into the final feedback. Thanks, Bryce. Sorry we didn't get the answer you wanted. Peter, good morning. Oh, thank you. Um, is it like, like what's happened in Ta Tauranga? Like, even Tory had the idea. We have four business people running the, um, the council. They did that in Tauranga, and it worked very, very well. Is that the solution, really, for all counties in New Zealand, just to have four business people or four commissioners to run the, run the actual... Um, uh, I think Peter uh, means he, uh, the commissioners. Do we need a commissioner? No. No. Thanks, Peter. Appreciate it. Let's talk Thorndon. 0800 80 1080. We've got another couple of lines free if you want to 
ask Tori a question. Um, there's been lots of complaints from business owners about the Thorndon Key as nearly $55 million worth of work is completed. Where is this at and uh, when will the business owners get some kind of reprieve from all that work? Yeah, it's, it's, it is really tough and even I've admitted uh, the number of cones down that end is quite substantial. Um, so the, the, um, that street will be done, that whole section will be done uh, by April next year. And what's happening at the moment, it's done. April next year? What yes. happened, how do the businesses hold on? So it's done section by section, um, and which means it, it does have an impact on the section that the businesses um, are placed. So um, council officers met with a few last week um, to see what we could do, and we're going to run an economic impact report for that area. Um, we're going to look at you know how we can reduce the number of road cones, uh, signage, and access to shops, um, and we'll, we'll just keep working through. We, we really want to get it done um, as soon as possible. Others have asked for a delay. If we delay it, it'll just get worse. It'll what about just get the, more expensive. What about the new story that we're getting that's $55 million worth of waterworks that still need to be done after this is all completed? Um, I'm not aware of that figure, um, but I know that we've spoken to Wellington Water who said there, were, there are no um, plans for the next 10 years of that area. So this, the story that's been floating around that there's been uh, $55 um, million dollars worth of work being done, but they need to dig it up again after the $55 million potentially and do it. Is that not that's, actually... I don't think problem? that's a thing um, at the moment. Um, we spoke to the CE... Um, we spoke to the... SPE, excuse me. We spoke to the CE last week and asked, is any work planned in the next 10 years? No. Uh, has been on the front page of papers and stuff, though, hasn't it? Well, a lot of things have been in the paper that haven't okay. been, you know. Oh, okay. Well, we won't get into that. <laughs> um, you know me. I, you know, I'm, I'm always going to be a little bit. Mm, did you? Did you? What about the to... story in this morning's paper that said that uh, the council didn't even seek information on the pipes under their work? You know, is that good enough? No, like, but they, so... they didn't actually look at it and say, "Hey, this is going to be great. We're going to do this," and then we're done. They didn't look and say, "Oh, well, by the pipe, by the way, we're still going to do pipes." So the project at the time was with Let's Get Wellington Moving, and Let's Get Wellington Moving, um, you know, got got that information. We were satisfied. We've um, since then asked Wellington Water, and it, they've said it doesn't need the work. Okay. Right. There we are, Thorndon people. You've heard it first here on the show. It's not going to be dug up once you get through. We're, we're, we're going to triple check, of course. We'll triple check. Hopefully you'll get through. Um, to, hopefully yeah. you'll survive to April. Oh, my God. Did you give them any hope? I wasn't in that meeting. Oh, okay. Um, but, uh, yeah. George, you've got a question for Mayor Tori Farno. Is that for me? Yes, if your name's George. Oh, cool. Yep, thank you. Um, the GNS scientists, you were talking about earthquakes, have said that Wellington is going to experience a 9.2 mega earthquake from the Hikarangi Fault, and we're going to be affected by the Alpine Fault, which is an 8.0. We have now got the um, Wellington City Council going into a building that's going to be totally affected by the tsunami. We're looking at... Can you get to the question, George, please? My question is coming up. They're uh, looking at civil defence says over 1,500 people will die from facades and stuff falling on them. What is the council doing to prepare the citizens of Wellington for this event? Um, so we have a very uh, close relationship with Remo, who do all of our emergency management. I'm actually the chairperson um, on the region for that. Um, so in terms of emergency management, it's, it, it's very well organised. We're increasing our funding for them as well, um, and uh, we've got some wonderful people. In terms of upgrading um, a lot of our buildings around the city, we're working with the government um, and Minister Pink on on that. Um, we are, with the council going back to Tiangako, that's going to be at 100% NBS. And um, that's actually a lot of why our current LTP um, is so tricky, right? Because we're trying to... Move, move certain funds around that in, in, in the event of a disaster we'd be able to provide help for the city and build our city back. Wellington Mayor Tori Fano in the studio uh, with us for the next uh, 17 minutes, 16 minutes. If you want a quick question or quick uh, chat to Tori, there's your opportunity, 0800 80 1080. Where are we at the moment with the dreaded Golden Mile? So, at the mo so we've now taken it off. Let's get Wellington moving. And they're basically going over the entire project to see if there are any 
efficiencies, anything we can save money um, before it's fully bought in-house and they have to build the team to deliver the project. When do you think you'll start? I I reckon, um, you know, spades in the ground in the next year. Can can you give us three or four years to get our feet back on the ground? Can you, you know, anyway, um, when can we expect to hear what, what, when and how? Uh, Hopefully in the next, I'd, I'd say month. We're going to be that close. Yeah, that's the. Are you going in to terms of, in terms of yeah, like, sorry, I've, I forgot to mention before. So this this piece is going to be a crucial part of our city revitalisation plan that we're putting together now, um, and that is exact that that is a project I want to liaise with the business, my mural business advisory group with, um, and as part of that big project, so we've got the Golden Mile, we've got city safety, we've got hospitality, um, you know, Cuba Street, arts. To, to get our city vibing again. Um, and that will essentially be, like the Tengako plan, the plan for the inner city. I think, and I wasn't lucky enough to be invited onto that group of people because I've only been in business 45 years in Wellington. But, um, and you get me once a month. Uh, yeah, okay. Um, Cuba Street doesn't need to be touched. Cuba Street is the most buoyant um, happening area in the city, I believe, and I spend a lot of time there. I think the only thing you can do to ruin Cuba Street is take away more car parking, where Golden Mile, could you could affect a whole lot of people's incomes. So that vibe of Cuba, we want across the entire precinct. That's what we want to achieve. Try and keep some businesses in there, then that might help. Yep. Anyway, let's move on. So a month to find out. You're going to oh, take it on. I've created that timeline okay. myself, so I'll come back to you about that. All right. Council's new building. The council's moving to the Datacom building on Jervois Square at the start of next year, but won't disclose the, of the cost of the lease. Why won't you disclose the cost of the lease? Why, as ratepayers, don't we know what you're paying for the rent? Because um, that's a commercial, confidential, and, and standard practice for any commercial lease. What is it actually going to cost us? The whole shift and the whole shebang and everything. Um, it's probably, that's quite an operational thing I would, um, ask officers about. Okay. Um, what about the story that I heard from a pretty reliable source that you needed and required 100 car parks in that office block? Is that true? I don't know. Okay. Um, if it is true, would that upset you? The fact that you're cutting car parks all around town, yet the council building has to have 100 car parks? No, I've, I've told you before. I, I like taking parks off the street to reprioritise the streets for people, but I'm not against parking buildings. Like, it's better to build up to give people what they need, but we have such limited space um, that we just need to make it more more people-focused, more open spaces. Um, I like pedestrianisation because actually it does bring more people out onto the streets. Council-owned social housing. You know this is a bugbearer of mine. Yeah. I think that we don't need to compete with the government. There should be one agency for social housing, and it should be government-run. Why? Now you've seen the and, you know, the re- details of the review into Kaingaroa. Does that make you kind of a little bit concerned that we're going to have the same issues with your own council social housing? Uh, po- look, possibly. So... Um but as you know, so we tra- we transferred it into Te Toi Mahana last year. Um, let's just see how it runs. And if- would you ever look at that idea and say, "Hey, why do we need to have? Why do we need to compete against the government for social housing? Surely there should be one group of social housing run by the government, and all that money could be used so much better to lower our rates." Yeah, uh, but again, like, I mean, it's tricky, right? Because we want to retain as many assets as possible to uh, to generate income for council and not rely on the government because that always changes. It's hard to understand that when you're trying to sell the airport shares and you know how much money you make out and what a great investment it is. Uh, it's, we're, we're potentially selling airport shares to put into another asset that we will own. Okay. Can't think of a much better asset to own than an international airport in the capital city. Look, and we agree, but again, we have very limited options um, when it comes to insurance and risk. I don't want to quite give up on this council-owned social housing, so I'm sorry, I'm going to push you a little bit harder this. Cool. I want to know why you wouldn't look at doing a review when the six, when the, the review was so scathing of KO. I'll look at it. Does that mean... I that mean, you... it's, not, it's not on my radar to do that, to be honest. But, but surely look. this is a big investment. How many houses do we actually own? How many social housing places do we actually own? 
I, I'm not sure. What I'll do is I'll I'll talk to council. I'll talk to our two um, councillors who are on the Te Toi Mahana board, which is uh, Councillor Matthews and Councillor Brown. They are um, very much across this. I'll chat okay. to them. Do you know the value of that as an asset to our city? It's about uh, 500 million. 500 million. What are you going to get out of selling the Wellington Airport? Uh, well, it depends if we do full share or partial okay. share. But you be, seem uh, to be talking about the partial share a bit. Is that going to happen? Do you think that's going to be a, a way of, of getting it through? It's something I'm looking into proactively. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Is that is that your little compromise? It's a compromise. In case the vote doesn't pass. Yeah. Yeah. Well, how do you think the vote's going to go right now? You're obviously a bit concerned by it. Of course I am. Like because if it, it look again, no one wants to sell the airport. We don't want to do that, but we have to address a very real problem of insurance or lack of insurance that we have. Um, I would say, based on the public feedback and response, a full sale is unlikely. It just doesn't look like we have the support for that. So, Do you reckon you'd have the support for a full sale of the council social housing? Probably not, but it's not something that's come up. Yeah. I don't think we would, but, you know. I wonder if it went to, if the actual social housing went to the government and there was one organisation that took care of everybody. We want to take care of people. I'm not saying we don't, but I don't want to be the, I don't want to be the landlord of it. I don't want to be paying my mm -hmm. rates. Does it weigh any? Does any of it weigh on your shoulders when you hear that the uh, the Reserve Governor Adrian Orr saying that until we can get council rates down, inflation's going to be sticky and interest rates are going to be high? Do you hold any responsibility for that? Of course I do. Like yeah. I actually, this this long term plan, um, you know, it, it it gives me anxiety about the impact that it'll have have on our people. And you genuinely have a team of councillors who are trying to look at little, either little pockets or big pockets. How can we make this easier for people, but still pushing our city forward? It is really, really hard. Um, and if, so, I, yes, I feel res some responsibility. Make the call. Sell the sell the social housing. It's half a billion dollars. That will tidy a lot of things up. Tori Farno, thank you for joining us this morning. I, I know it's my own little crusade crusade for the city. Uh, we all want the same thing. We want our city to be better. Thank you for coming and taking the time.